Hello there my very good friends, Andy Murray here for What Culture Wrestling and today we are going to talk about a handful of wrestlers who have never won a single match on WWE pay-per-view. Now that's a pretty simple explanation and you can probably tell what this video is all about just from looking at the title. But before we dive in, a couple of things here. I'm only going to talk about singles matches, one on one, because while that does widen the field a little bit, it does make it a lot more interesting. And also, there are a whole bunch of guys you could go, hey, this guy is zero and zero, or hey, this person is zero and one. We're going to omit those for the most part and stick only to wrestlers who have had three or more single matches. Singles matches, I should say. So let's just clarify that before we dive in. Regardless, some of the names on this list are pretty damn interesting and indeed surprising. So let's have a look and find out who the real winless wonders of WWE pay-per-view history really are. I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling and here are 18 WWE wrestlers who have never won a pay-per-view match. Number 18, Eric Bischoff. Now, <laughs> Eric Bischoff obviously wasn't a full-time wrestler in WWE, but he still worked 23 matches throughout his entire wrestling career, some of which went down on Vince McMahon's home turf. But he only wrestled four individual singles matches on pay-per-view, he lost them all, and his opponents included Steve Austin, Eugene, and Teddy Long. Still, he's Eric Bischoff, so, you know, he made more of an impact on professional wrestling as a whole than literally anyone else on this list, so ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Number 17, Midian. Now, Midian isn't exactly the most decorated wrestler in WWE history, but he is a former European champion, so it might come as some surprise to know that he went 0-5 in singles competition on pay-per-view. One of those matches was actually losing the European title to D'Lo Brown back in 1999. He did, however, fare slightly better in tag matches. So on that note, number 16, Henry O. Godwin. And here we find Midian's former partner in Pigdom. They were the Godwins together. Phineas I. Godwin, P.I.G. and Henry O. Godwin, H.O.G. Because pig stuff. Anyway, this fella fared slightly better on pay-per-view, but only slightly. He went 0-4. And one of those matches was a hog's pen match against Triple H on an In Your House show back in the day, which you should really check out if you really hate yourself and want to waste all of your time. Number 15, Heidenreich. A true hero of what we here at What Culture Headquarters call the Benroy era of WWE. It's actually quite surprising that Heidenreich didn't win a pay-per-view match one-on-one -on -one in WWE because he was pushed as a monster, well, pretty much from the get-go. It just didn't really work out. And to think at one point, this guy was actually going to go over The Undertaker. <sighs> that didn't exactly take, and instead, he ended up farting around, reading poetry, doing a really crap Legion of Doom revival, and doing stuff to Michael Cole backstage. Why did I even bring that up? Number 14, Coco Beware. And here he is, Coco Beware, really justifying that spot in the WWE Hall of Fame with zero pay-per-view wins. But I'm not gonna go in too hard on poor Mr. Beware here because, well, if you've ever seen that video of him destroying that jobber, the Patriots back in the territory days, well, I just don't want that to happen to me. Sorry, Coco. Number 13, Marty Jannetty. Now the original party Marty was around in WWE for, well, a long, long time. But did that mean any pay-per-view victories one-on-one? -on -one? Well, no, of course not. Otherwise you wouldn't be on this list, you bloody idiot. But it did include losses to the likes of Savio Vega, Ludwig Borga, and of course, Shawn Michaels. They were slightly better as a member of the Rockers, but they weren't exactly a hard-winning team on WWE pay-per-view either. Poor Marty. Number 12, Maurice. Although in her later years in WWE, Maurice pretty much just became like a part-time wrestler, full-time valet type figure, it's quite easy to forget that she was actually Divas Champion for over 200 days back in the day, but she didn't win a single one-on-one -on -one match on pay-per-view. And in one of those matches, she actually lost the goddamn title, I think, to Mickie James. But that being said, she did kind of have the last laugh when it came to in-ring on pay-per-view with her last pay-per-view match teaming with The Miz, beating Brie Bella and Daniel Bryan at Hell in a Cell 2018. 
Number 11. Albert. And surprise, surprise, the man who was originally named after a penis piercing did not win a single pay-per-view match, whether he was wrestling as Tensai, at Lord Tensai, Albert, Prince Albert, A2. How many names has this goddamn guy had? He went 0 and 4 in total, but I mean, get a look at this list of opponents. We've got Rikishi. Mm -hmm. We got Edge. Mm -hmm. We got Chris Benoit. I can't really give Chris Benoit a thumbs up, but you know, he was a really good wrestler. And The Undertaker. Not bad. Number 10, Tori. A fixture of the attitude either she may have been, but Tori didn't exactly wrestle a whole lot. I think she only worked something like 80 to 90 matches across her entire WWE career. And on pay-per-view, she went zero and three with an in-ring time average of just over three minutes. That's not exactly glittering, but she definitely played a role in the era, in the attitude era, and hey, she made a mark. Number 9, Justin Gabriel. Here's another former WWE champion, a three-time tag team champion to be precise, who went winless one-on-one -on, -one on pay per view Now, Gabriel's success as a tag wrestler does kind of explain his lack of success in singles competition, but he actually fought for the US title twice on pay-per-view in 2008 against Cesaro and Jack Swagger. He just didn't win any of the damn things, so it's a good job he's doing better now in 2020 as PJ Black in Ring of Honor. Number eight, Tamina. There might be nobody meaner than Tamina, but guess what? There's also very few who are better at losing pay-per-view matches. Tamina is zero and three one-on-one -on, -one on pay-per-view competition with her list of opponents, including Paige, Caitlin, Beth Phoenix, and all of these matches were for the Divas title. Number seven, Akira Tozawa. Now, Tozawa, to be fair, has only ever wrestled on kickoff shows, but you know what? The kickoff show is still part of the pay-per-view show itself, so that counts. And he's most memorable for that six day run with the Cruiserweight title that ended with him losing the belt back to Neville in 2017. A pointless affair entirely, but you know, poor little fella just can't get it done on pay-per-view one-on-one. -on -one. Number six, Hornswoggle. Not even we LC could guarantee Hornswoggle a big pay-per-view victory one-on-one. -on -one. And you know what, man? You should really just go and watch that match. It's on YouTube for free with El Torito. It's an absolute riot. It's one of those things where you look back on it, you see it on a billing and you think, that must have been garbage, right? No, it's class, it's loads of fun. Hornswoggle didn't win, though, and he didn't win the hair versus mask thing that him, ugh. That thing sucked, just, just watch WLC. Number five, Tommy Dreamer. Now Tommy Dreamer has been in and out of WWE more times than I've been called Moby on the internet, but he hasn't won a single one-on-one -on -one match on pay-per-view and his list of opponents includes Christian, Mark Henry, and Davari? But you know, given that long parts of Tommy Dreamer's career revolved around him losing heroically, I guess this kind of fits. Number four, Mustafa Ali. And I guess the most uh, prominent example of Ali failing to win on pay-per-view came in that weird WrestleMania match him and Cedric Alexander had where they just kind of shouted heart and soul at each other for 15 minutes. That was really, really strange. But the guy's on his way back to WWE. There's talk that he might be getting a nice little push so maybe that'll change. Number three, Sin Cara slash Honeyco. Let's make it clear that we're only talking about the second version of Sin Cara here, the Honeyco version of Sin Cara, the one that used to team with Tamatonga's crappy brother in WWE. He didn't win a single pay-per-view match with the last one coming against Andrade back in 2018. And you know, now that he's not even in the company anymore, I think it's safe to say that that's never gonna change. Number two, Jacqueline. Now. Keep in mind that Jacqueline is a two-time women's champion, a former cruiserweight champion, and a certified WWE Hall of Famer. Surely that can't be right. Oh, no, no, she is winless on pay-per-view. That's crazy. It's blown my wig clean off. She is zero and three, all of them in title matches with the last one being that weird match where Chavo Guerrero had his hand tied behind his back and still won the Cruiserweight title. A weird stipulation, particularly when you consider that if it was a real fight, Jacqueline would probably destroy him. And at number one, Lacey Evans. Lacey is going to win on pay-per-view, right? It's gonna happen. She's gonna be a fixture on WWE programming for years to come, but it still eludes her. She is zero and five 
one-on-one -on, -one on pay per view, with her last big singles match being losing to Bailey at Royal Rumble 2020. She had all those Becky matches. She had a couple with Natalia, including the one in Saudi Arabia. That win will come. WWE love her, just not yet. But anyway, guys, that's it. The end of the list. That's all from me. Now, tell us what you think about these winless wankers. That's a little bit harsh, but we'll roll with it down in the comment section below. And once you've done that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Then follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at Andy H. Murray if you want to tell me how wrong I am. Goodbye, and I'm sorry for calling you all wankers.